Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the number one issue of self-hosting. So guys, what is the number one issue of self-hosting? Well, I would wager to say, at least in my opinion, the number one issue of self-hosting is being able to access your self-hosted content remotely. That means if you're not in your house, how do you look at your cameras? How do you access your media server? How do you play your games? These are all problems that require pretty in-depth technical know-how to be able to access remotely securely. Yeah, chat How can I access my any media server remotely? Security. Use a VPN. Use a router with built-in VPN support. So you to set up a dedicated device with the VPN. VPN. Set up a reverse proxy trap. Now, that's not to say you can't do simple solutions. For example, you can port forward, for example, on your network and open it up to the internet, and then you can access your stuff remotely. However, this poses a lot of big problems. Exposing your ports does increase um, the likelihood that someone's going to try to get into your network. Um, and there's basically people that port scan all the time trying to get into networks and hack computers. So leaving your network open with ports to the internet basically makes you vulnerable to hacking, DDoS attacks, and even malware. If you guys don't believe me that this is an issue, all you have to do is look at self-hosted, a Reddit subreddit, and you can see lots of examples of people discussing uh, basic things and how people got into their networks. Um, this guy got hacked. Um, this one was talking about it. Um, this guy said, uh, you know, there are a couple scenarios, and this guy said he might have been compromised. Uh, there's a lot of issues with self-hosting, and this is one of the biggest ones is securing your network. Port forwarding isn't as easy as you might think it is as well. There are a couple different settings you have to configure going into your router, and misconfiguring things can actually end up breaking your network. Additionally, a lot of home internet service providers provide you with a dynamic IP address, which can be um, make it hard to access your network remotely with um, the same IP address all the time. Now, a lot of the self-hosting community actually is pretty in-depth and know-how, um, and they use stuff like um, um, reverse proxies or cloud hosted tunnels, but this stuff can be pretty hard to um, kind of implement and set up. And it's definitely part of the learning curve of self hosting. Um, and there are uh, just, you know, like I said, lots of setup required with these kind of things. A lot of these things also require paid subscriptions too, adding to the expense of maintaining your setup. Another option is setting up your own WireGuard network or open VPN server. And just like reverse proxies and cloud hosted tunnels, this also requires pretty in-depth know-how and it can require um, a knowledge of protocols, uh, a bit of code and configuring a router and pretty in-depth networking. And suffice to say, if you don't do all this stuff right, you can still leave your network vulnerable and you can still have a lot of issues um, with your, your network overall. So at the end of the day, a lot of people just don't really bother with remote access. You can still set up a pretty good self-hosted network at home and you don't even really need to necessarily be able to access it, but still a lot of the times a huge con, especially when it comes to stuff like accessing your security cameras or something like that. Uh, it's very easy to just get a, a security camera that's not really connected to the internet, something like a real link camera. You could access it via the browser. You don't need an application or anything like that. And you could even have it record on an SD card and look at the footage at home and see a view, live view. But how do you go to that browser if you're not home to check on that camera? Well, that's when you need remote access. Or let's say you're going to a friend's house and you want to watch a show that's actually on your media server. Again, that would require remote access. Or let's say you're hosting some kind of game and it's a local game. Let's say you just want a local server. Maybe you want to have a Minecraft server, um, but you don't really want it available to the world. You just want your friends to be able to kind of jump in. There are a lot of other services out there. I think back in the day, people were using Hibachi and different things like this. Um, but this is another example of when you might want someone to be able to get into your network to be able to play games with you. So while WireGuard and just setting up your own VPN is definitely a solution, while reverse proxies and a lot of these things are definitely a solution as well, um, reverse proxies and those kind of things are more for making maybe a website that you want a lot of people to access. But how do you specifically set up a easy solution that's secure that maybe you want to just access yourself or maybe a friend or two? How do you do that? Well, that's where NordVPN's MeshNet comes into play. 
Now, if you didn't know, NordVPN has created a MeshNet feature inside their VPN subscription, which basically allows you to set up a local area network on your computer. And through NordVPN's WireGuard protocol, you can actually remotely access it very easily just by using the NordVPN application. Basically, all you do is install the NordVPN application on your main media server. That could be Linux or a PC as well. You just turn on the MeshNet feature, and then on your other device that you're connecting to, um, the server from you'll install NordVPN there too and install MeshNet there as well. Pretty much from here, it's as simple as just going in the URL of your browser, entering the IP address of that NordVPN WireGuard tunnel with a port or something like that, and that's pretty much how you do it. I'll be going more into depth and kind of showing you how to do this shortly. So why is this method really good? Well, it's secure, it's using WireGuard, you don't really have to set up all that stuff on your own. It's not really meant for publicly accessing for anyone else, so it's secure that way as well. It's easy to do and set up. It doesn't require any real technical know-how. It assigns a static IP address on the mesh net network, which resolves a problem from your IS ISP. It lets you basically connect to your self-hosted services as if you were at home. It doesn't require port forwarding, really any setup at all, or exposing your network to the internet. It also works on Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, and iOS, so that's really nice. Another cool thing is you could easily transfer files and stuff like that, or even access your NAS remotely. So guys, let's go ahead and show you how to set it up. So guys, in this tutorial, just to make things as easy as possible for you, I'm gonna be using NordVPN in conjunction with the tutorials as well to help you guys understand how to do this effectively. I'll also be putting links for the tutorials down in the description down below. And if you decide you like this method and you wanna purchase NordVPN, I'll be putting a discount link in the description down below that will get you four extra months as well as a very good discount. It is currently my top rated VPN and it's objective rarely, and this VPN is not sponsored by Nord. Check out vpntierless.com to see how I I extensively review VPNs. I've reviewed almost every VPN. I've been doing this for around eight years, so you can know you could trust my reviews. All right, guys, so here I have NordVPN kind of floating here. And basically what we're gonna do is follow the tutorial and show you how it works. So here we have NordVPN. You're gonna click on this little section here um, where it says MeshNet toggle. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. We'll go here. As you can see, it's enabled as off right now. So all you have to do is just click on, and then it's gonna give you a little second or two. And then this is what it's going to look like. So right here we have MeshNet, um, this is on, and we can link our devices and respond to connection invitations. So that's kind of how you link the devices. So here we have here, it says Tom Spark. This is this device. Um, it's um, kind of like the media server, let's say. But we don't have any devices connected to it so far. So let's see what the tutorial says next. Um, so as you can see here, it just goes on to talk about this device. Um, and a little bit of a note here for explainer. Nord names are unique, automatically assigned host names for all devices in your mesh net. So this is kind of like your IP address. Um, so this is the information here, just kind of for more detail on that. So your main device is assigned a unique Nord and mesh net IP address, which you saw me show. And this is how other devices will kind of access it. So now the next step you wanna do is add devices. So this depends on what kind of device you're gonna be using, whether it be your phone. Um, I think you could even do it on Apple TV as well now or even another computer as well if you want to do it that way. So basically from here, you just install that app on the devices, like I said, that you want to connect with, log into your NordVPN account and enable MeshNet, and they will be connected automatically. So apparently you could use up to 10 devices. So basically to add another device, you send an invitation through the NordVPN application specifying their email address. So you can even add other users as well when they could connect. So this is what I meant when I said you could share kind of access to your friends for gaming or even access to your media server, which is very cool. And this is, like I said, one of the easiest ways to do this. So they can actually become part of your mesh net and access stuff on that. So that is pretty cool. So you can see the device is linked. We'll link our device just to show you how it works in a second. And you can unlink it as well. And that's pretty much um, all you have to do. You can even manage devices on the NordVPN account dashboard, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this working. All right, guys. So basically what I'm doing right now is I'm recording my phone to show you kind of what I'm looking at. And I'll put that on the screen. So we've logged into our, our NordVPN account. And now what we're gonna do is click here for a mesh net and we'll turn that feature on. And then we're gonna add allow. So it's gonna add a little wire guard tunnel. We'll just enter in our password here. So we entered in that password. And now you can actually see, um, I do believe that's the computer's mesh net address there. Um, so personal device is here. 
Um, so that's, I was incorrect. So my computer is Alps and then my phone is the Everest one. So one thing we're gonna test is file transfer. So I picked a photo and now I'm going to try to send it to the computer. So now it says I got a photo down here and we're just gonna accept it. And there you go. So I guess we just got a photo. So we transferred a file. Um, so I'm not really sure exactly where the file went, but um, there it is. Oh, there it is right there. So we just click open file location and there it is right there. I just transferred that from my phone. That was really cool. So another cool feature, another cool feature you can do with NordVPN's MeshNet is if you want your phone to have the same IP address as your computer. Now this has some benefits. Let's for example, you're remote and you want to have your computer's IP address access um, geo-restricted content or something like that, or you want to have a specific IP address. Well, all you have to do is go to the route traffic section. And then if it has that little button, I do believe it's on. It's, it, the interface could use some work there. Um, but I do believe it's on now. And then if it has the little button, that means you could turn it on. So it's a little counterintuitive. Um, but yeah, if it has a computer, a little green dot, that means you pretty much have the same IP address of your computer, which is pretty cool. So guys, the trick to using this with like, let's say a remote media server is to kind of understand the differences in between your device's IP and your device connecting to that device. So one thing I kind of ran into, which seems like a very stupid problem, is I was trying to connect my MB Media server um, remotely. And what I was actually doing is on the phone, it will show you this IP address. I was trying to connect actually to the phone itself on the network, and that's not how you do it. So my phone actually doesn't have a media server on it, um, but my computer is running MB. So I put this address in the port 8096, since that's what MB uses, and I was able to connect to it. Specifically, I made sure to kind of follow this guide as well with NordVPN, since it does suggest using a specific range to make it more secure uh, in the settings here. Let me show you that. You pretty much just make them remote IP address field enter in this one, since that's like the range they use for MeshNet. And this will make it so um, only these addresses can remotely connect. It just makes it a little bit uh, more secure. But with MB, you don't actually actually do that. You could just connect to it as long as you make sure to enable uh, the remote access setting. So there's usually like a little checkbox, like right here with Jellyfin, since it's kind of the same thing. So guys, that's pretty much a pretty good overview. The key understanding is understanding what MeshNet really is. When you set it up on your computer, it has a IP address that's gonna make you, that's kind of easy to write down. And then you install NordVPN on your phone, you connect mesh, mesh networking, MeshNet, it's on the same address. Now, if you wanna access something on your computer, you just use that as a computer's address and you'll be able to go onto your computer and access that. Um, so it's really is as simple as that. And this really kind of simplifies self-hosting a lot. If you want to access your cameras, you'll just act like um, you're going to know your computer's address instead of typing that, the IP, you're just going to use that Nord MeshNet one. And that's going to be pretty much a substitute for your computer's IP address. And that's how you gain access to it. So pretty cool. Now, controversially, if you do want to access something like an IP camera, the process is slightly different, but it's more of about when I was referring to um the um remember the traffic kind of forwarding and that's kind of more what it is um or the traffic routing is what it's called so basically what you do in that example is you would just start routing client um the traffic from a client device to the host device so let's say i'm trying to access the camera remotely on my phone and my computer so pretty much what i would do is just the route traffic feature um, and then, then you could just go to the camera's normal ip and then you can see the camera. Um, you just need to make sure that, um, that that setting is enabled. So you do wanna make sure that that device, um, like you can see here, you just click on the device and manage it. And then you could see um, that you could uh, play around with some of the settings. But for example, here, um, traffic routing through your device, access to your local network. So you could customize a lot of these cool things that are very nice. Um, so you could definitely do that. So as long as you enable the traffic routing, um and access to your network once you have that feature turned on on your phone like i showed you by clicking on the little thing to turn the computer icon with that little green button um then you will be able to access uh, stuff like your camera on your network with the traffic routing feature so pretty cool also guys if you're still not sure on how to do some of these things um you know meshnet.nordvpn.com they have tons of tutorials going through this so they really did a really good job documenting it 
probably some of the best documentation I've ever seen from a VPN provider really going into a lot of issues or various things you can do with it. They did a really good job with this one. Anyways, guys, let me know what you thought of this in the description down below, and I'll see you again very soon.